uh, since the fans off, uh, there will be a few short ones. I'm reminded, of course, at times like this about the famous actress Elizabeth Taylor supposedly said to her sixth husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> uh, this is the 50th anniversary. Peggy and I, I some of y'all might have met, met Peggy, but, uh, and I enjoyed being an you know, elegant, wonderful mother. And I wish I, we could turn back the hands of time. I, I'd like to hear more about your granddaddy and I guess his uh, your great uncle uh, way back. I, I think that's an interesting story. This is an interesting one here. Peggy and I just had our 41st wedding anniversary. We're heading for the 50th. And I told a friend about that, and he said, well, that's nothing. My wife and I just had our 58th wedding anniversary celebrated. He said, I know the secret to a long, happy marriage. I said, well, what is the secret to a long, happy marriage? He says, twice a week, two nights a week, we go out to a nice little quiet restaurant, have a nice little quiet dinner. I go on Tuesday, she goes on Thursday. <laughs> Of fun working working for this great company. I got one more one more to tell you about. I don't know if I've told you all this, but back in 2016, I'm a Republican, so I went to the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. And I called my wife Peggy on the way up. She stayed home. I went up there. It's a big deal. And I called and said, I said, uh, Peggy, did you ever in your wildest dream see your husband Henry going to nominate Donald Trump for president? at the National Convention, ever in your wildest dream. She said, Henry, I hate to tell you, but I never seen you in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> but y'all, this isn't a dream. This is a, this is a great thing. And Sheffler, the, the success of what you're doing is, is obvious. To, to, to a visitor and to those who work here, from working with the technical college, which is where the action is, these days, we, we do we have great research universities, and as y'all know, they are eager to enter in collaborations with companies like this. And I always recommend when a new company is coming in or looking, call call those universities because they can they collaborate, communicate, cooperate. It doesn't cost a thing, and and it uh, produces great results. That's one of the first things Samsung did when they came in was entered into collaborations when the tariffs came in. It would have slowed them down because of those collaborations. They found ways to speed up their production line, and the impact was minimized. So we encourage that. But the technical college here with Dr. Wagner is, is really a, a great thing. But your apprenticeship program that's noted all over the, the world it is terrific. The health clinic, that's another thing. The wellness clinic, all those sorts of things. But it's all aimed. You have to have good executives, of course. You have to have brain power. You have to have thinking. You have to have a plan. But the main thing you have to have is the people who will do the work. And I've been to a lot of, lot of meetings with a lot of executives and a lot of companies, and I want to, want to tell you all, they, they all say the same thing, whether they're from Germany, from, uh, uh, from Switzerland, from Sweden, from Japan, from Korea, they all say the same thing. When I ask them, why, why South Carolina? Well, it's the United States to begin with, which is a safe place to work. It is South Carolina, of course, is, is unique with our geography, our water, our mountains, our oceans, and the marshes, and unfortunately, the overflowing PD rivers, the large and small. Mr. Yao and I, last time we were together, we were flying around in a helicopter looking at it. Where's the mayor? Where'd Mayor Ingram go? Thank you very much for your work, too, sir. But they say all of those things are important, but the most important thing is the people. Say so the people of South Carolina of the reason that they want to come to South Carolina. And I said, why is that? And they say, because the people of South Carolina will work, and when they give you that word, they keep it. No matter what the area is, whether it's an architect, whether it's a contractor, whether it's someone working in the plant, whether it's a supplier, no matter what it is, when they give you that word, they keep it. So I want to thank, thank these, these work. That's, they're, they're talking about, about you. And I know Mr. Scheffler and these executives are well, are well aware of that. But this is, uh, this is the beginning. And I believe that this, this company and what is happening here is a model that many, many others can follow and which we will encourage. And of course, and I, I ask you, if there's anything that, that you think we can do, we don't stand on ceremony. If you, if you have something and, and you think that, that the government at some level or some entity somewhere can help provide something to make this work better, uh, we'll do it. 
And I mentioned one more thing about the people in South Carolina because I want I want to say loud and clear how different. And every state has great people, but there's something different about the people of South Carolina, our history, where we come from, how how we got here. But the great general, four-star general Mark Clark, back after World War II, he was the youngest four-star general in the history of the United States said that there's more patriotism per square inch in South Carolina than any place in the world. Now that means something. It certainly means something to me. I know it means something to you. And remember, it is always the people. So we know it. We appreciate what you, you are doing. We want to keep it going. And be sure to tell the children, tell the children, be proud of South Carolina. It is the best place on this earth to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you.